Do you rent your equipment from your internet service provider or do you supply your own? That is a question I get asked a lot. And after my recent downtime with my service provider, I discovered something fascinating that I didn't know my service provider actually does. If you're wondering if you should rent or you should buy, don't worry, I got you. This is the video you've been waiting for. Let's do it. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Leron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. Okay, so which one is it? Do we rent or do you buy? Well, the answer is um, not so simple. Before we can make that decision, we need to understand that connectivity with an internet cable service provider actually boils down to two things. The first is the modem. That is the bit that actually translates the internet transmission into data that you can use on your network. It's the bit that hangs at the end of that cable. The second bit is the router. That is the bit that actually gives you that connectivity onto your network, gives you your Wi-Fi, gives you your LAN plugin, and you kind of need both. Now, these can be two separate pieces of hardware, or you can get a combined unit that does both the modem and the router. And here is the bit that I had no idea that actually happened. With my service provider and with a lot of the service provider that I've looked up in the US and you gotta check with yours, they actually give you the modem bit for free. The only bit that they rent is essentially the router bit. Yep, I had no idea either. Okay, so now that we know that modem bit comes free, we actually just have to look at the router. Do you buy the router and supply your own or do you lease that from your ISP? Well, of course there's pros and cons to both. So let's look at those. Let's start with the pros of leasing from your service provider. The big pro is that it's somebody else's problem. They set it up, they maintain it, they update it, they provide the firmware, they provide the connectivity. It's down to them to make sure that it works. The equipment has been rigorously tested on their network to make sure that it's compatible, to make sure it doesn't overheat and always gives you the best possible performance. And the biggest pro of leasing from your service provider is the wiggle room. They have none. When they say that they're going to give you a certain speed, they have to deliver that speed to your device because that's what you're paying for. What is the con of leasing from your service provider? Well, of course, there's that monthly fee. You're paying between five or eight dollars a month and router equipment can be as cheap as thirty five dollars. OK, so what's the pro and the cons of actually buying your own? Well, the big pro of buying your own is you get to choose the hardware. You get to choose the connectivity. You get to choose the facilities. Do you need Wi-Fi 6 or not? Do you get to set everything up yourself? You get to full control of that equipment. And of course, it's just a one-time fee. The con of buying your own is that you need to make sure it's compatible with your service provider. Not all hardware works on all service providers. They don't all provision them on their network. And then of course, it's how comfortable you are with being able to set everything up yourself because it's down to you. The service provider's responsibility simply ends at the point that the signal arrives at that modem. Anything on your network is your problem. Okay, so how do you choose? Now we have pros and cons for buying and pros and cons for leasing. How do you make a decision? Well, for me, it boils down to two things. The first is how long are you planning on being with your service provider? If you're planning on being in a place for less than 12 months, it doesn't actually make sense to buy. You should rather lease because for that period of time, it's their problem, their equipment, which means at the end of their lease, you're not left holding some piece of hardware that your new service provider might not necessarily work with. So less than 12 months, I tend to simply lease. And then the second bit is how comfortable you are with setting up your equipment. Now, I know that sounds scary, especially for those people who have never done this before. But these days, most of the router providers actually come with the wizard. It comes with a step by step instruction. And all you've got to do is simply follow that. And odds are pretty good that your network will be set up just fine. Of course, if you want to tinker and you want to really configure it, you need to know how to do that. Lots of videos in those cards just to let you know how to do that. In fact, your own service provider probably has videos and tutorials on their site telling you how to do this because they want you to have the best possible experience with them so that you don't leave. Of course, there's plenty of YouTube videos telling you how to set things up. Check out a lot of these Wi-Fi related videos, how to make your internet faster. Check all these out video here, which I'm pointing to frantically down here. And if it's your first time here, hit the head below to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in those videos.
go ahead and click now. Uh, now, 